Bienvenidos and welcome back to Puro Pinche Gol, the place to discuss all things USMNT y la Selección Mexicana. My name is Adrian, joining me once again my co-host Takayo. Adrian, Adrian, what's good, man? Hey, what's up, dude? Um, early morning for me, Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth, everyone. Um, and, man, I was up watching that uh, Croatia against Albania match. It's a good one. Yeah, that was a really good one. Um, I th- and I think the the best one, surprisingly, was that uh, Georgia match. Georgia and, yeah. um, Turkey. was it, Turkey? Yeah. Yeah. That was a really good back and forth match. Um, but uh, we're publishing this video uh, June 20th. Uh, so start of the Copa America. So that's great. Um, Copa America starts June 20th, Argentina and Canada. So uh, excited about that. Uh, mm-hmm. But this is Group D preview. Group D, the last group of Copa America. And uh, one of the most important groups for sure, because this is going to determine, you know, assuming the USMNT gets out of their group, who they will play. Um, but let's get into it. Group D consists of Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, and Paraguay. Uh, Brazil, we're going to highlight them first. Uh, head coach Dorival Jr. Last time they were champions was in 2019. They've, when they were hosting the tournament, they beat Peru 3-1. to one, And uh, they've been nine-time champions of this tournament, so less than Argentina, less than Uruguay, um, not as uh, successful as those teams. Uh, players to watch, definitely Allison, the goalkeeper. Uh, he's going to be the number one goalkeeper. Vini Jr. is going to be another player to watch. You know, if he's on the Real Madrid forward, mm-hmm. you know, is unstoppable to to mark. He is uh, one of the favorites to win the Ballon d'Or this season, and uh, rightfully so. And uh, though we saw him pretty tame and neutralized against uh, Mexico and uh, US Mateen, those friendlies. Um, another to watch, Rodrigo. Rodrigo, of course, uh, got a couple goals there in those matches. But um, this is not the Brazil of old. Uh, this is not the Brazil of R9, the Brazil of uh, Roberto Carlos and all those guys, Ronaldinho. Even Ronaldinho came out and said that yeah, uh, you he, know, he would so. not be watching. Yeah, <laughs> and saying that this is like the worst Brazil team he's seen. Uh, but, for money, boy. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I read that. Uh, but record heading into the tournament, uh, they're the second favorite for the tournament, you know, if, if you're looking at the betting odds after Argentina. They're currently six at Colmebol World Cup qualifiers. So, again, not the best of form. Uh, but uh, they're currently on a four-match unbeaten streak. Last loss coming back against Argentina in World Cup qualifying in November 2023. That includes a draw, most recently against the USMNT, 1-1. Then they beat Mexico 3-2. Before that was a draw, 3-3 against Spain, and a 1-0 win against England. Uh, again, leading back to that November 21st loss against Argentina. So ever since Don Ivan Jr. took over, um, they have been undefeated. Two wins, two draws. So... Uh, Brazil, man. I mean, again, not the not the best Brazil team, but um, yeah. definitely it's it's still it's still Brazil, right? And this is one of the things that you and I have discussed before. Where, yes, if you go line by line, Brazil is a star-studded team, uh, but that doesn't mean they are the greatest team ever. Uh, and what I mean with this is that yes, you have super good indi- indi- individual players, but when it comes as a unit, they aren't able to f- to mesh well. They aren't able to find themselves in in the best position. So. It's just in- it's interesting to see something similar like uh, that happens with England, right? So much talent, but unfortunately hasn't been uh, highly successful um, in, in recent years. So, yes, even though we all claim that this is not the best Brazil we've seen in the last, I don't know how many, for how many years, 20 years or whatever, um, it's still Brazil, still very competitive players, still a threat. So definitely, at least, if not the first, the second one in line to win it. Yeah, I wonder how this Brazil team compares to like a 2012, 2014 Brazil of like Hulk, Neymar, Thiago yeah. Silva. Um, yeah, definitely a different Brazil team. But yeah, they haven't have been the successful Brazil team we saw back in wow. 98 through 2002 or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, Colombia, another team that's very successful, 23 unbeaten streak. What can you tell us about them? All right. Their head coach is Nestor Lorenzo. Uh, the last time they were champions of uh, Copa America was back in 2001. Is their only championship win they've ever had. So um, it's been, you know, it's been a minute since then. Uh, some of the players to watch, we have, of course, Luis Diaz from Liverpool, uh, John Arias, and James Rodriguez. It's interesting to see James Rodriguez, man. You know, after that 2014 he's in Brazil World, now. Yeah, he's in Brazil. Here we go. Yep. Um, he, uh, it, it just, it's just interesting to see how his career exploded after Monaco in 2014. And then it was just a up and down until he recently found his form again. Uh, and now he's being called up for Colombia after missing two World Cups. That's that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, so another player to watch, James Rodriguez. Another, I guess, new old player to watch. Um, right now, how they're heading into the tournament. So this is the most interesting part because 
when we were doing the preview match or the match preview for USMNT against Colombia, we were mentioning that they were um they had a 23 unbeaten game streak, right? So they have pumped it up to what 25 now after those two matches, uh, or there's 23. I guess they were. No, 21. they pumped it up to 22. The 23. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. They were 20 uh, when we recorded that video. So thank you for correcting me. But nothing but wins, man. And you know the 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 last win was against Bolivia, three 0 easy game for them. After that, the five one against uh, the USMNT that we heavily criticized Triple G. Uh, they defeated Romania in March of this year, as well as defeating Spain one 0 in Spain uh earlier this year and then the last two wins of 2023 were against mexico 2-3 or 3-2 in that you know very weird match in before before christmas and then uh, a fifa world cup qualifying match against paraguay which they won one nil definitely as we you know i say i know that on our group c video i said that the usmnt was to me the fourth in line to win the copa america but there's a lot of people who are claiming that colombia it, it is and i don't disagree with them as, as I said, it's just that, historically speaking, Colombia has uh, choked in the last minute. So so there you go, Colombia. Uh, moving on from Colombia, uh, another uh, CONCACAF team here, Costa Rica, uh, head coach Gustavo Alfaro. Uh, last time champions, they have never been champions, but they finished quarterfinalists in 2001 and 2004. This will be, surprisingly, their sixth Copa America appearance. Um, this is not the Costa Rica that had that very, very successful run in 2014. This is uh, one that's kind of phasing out their old, you know, stars um, like uh, Keylor Navas just retired. Uh, they, uh, what's his name? The old forward that they had for the longest time, Brian uh, Ruiz, uh, Ruiz is, out, yeah. Yeah, is out of the team. Um, Campbell? So, uh, Joel Campbell, Campbell is still there. Still here? Yeah, the gotcha. 29-year-old, one of the players to watch. Uh, you know, he played in the Liga Mekis. He's played, you know, he was one of the Arsenal young uh, uh, youth players. Um, has had success, uh, definitely now has transitioned into that role of uh, one of the squad old-timers with the experience that he has. Um, but also the Spartak Moscow forward, uh, Manfred Ugalde, uh, another guy to watch here for Costa Rica. If they're going to get things done, get scoring goals, uh, it's going to be between those two guys. Um, so the record heading into the tournament, they currently lead Group B of the second round of CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers, uh, the most recent match for them. Uh, that has been a, a non concacaf opposition was a 3-1 loss to Argentina back in March 26th, uh, March 26th and a 0-0 draw to Uruguay uh, back in 34, 31st of May. So the other matches they've had recently have been a um, June 9th match, 3-0 win against Granada, and a, a June 6th match, 4-0 win against uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. Those are World Cup qualifiers from CONCACAF. And before that was those two matches against uh, Conmebol opposition, Argentina, Uruguay. And then before that was a Nations League win against Honduras 3-1 to one in March of this year. Mm -hmm. So um, Costa Rica, again, not the CONCACAF powerhouse they were for a couple of years there after, between 2014 and 2018. Um, yeah. Definitely in, in transition now. But, uh, you know, I mean, can can make life difficult, but I don't think anybody's expecting them to get out of this no, difficult group. No, I don't group. think so. I agree. <laughs> But um, what can you tell us about Paraguay, man? Paraguay, all right. Not so much, but the thing, a few things that I can tell you is their head coach is Daniel Garnero. Um, their last time they were champions in Copa America was in 1979. They have been champions twice back in 1953 and 1979. Jesus. Uh, players to watch. We have Miguel Almiron, who is an old, old good friend from M MLS times. Uh, he used to play with Atlanta United. Now he's playing with Newcastle. This is his fourth Copa America. Um, and we also want to look into Julio Enciso from Brighton. Um, those are the two players to watch. Miguel Lemiro, more common or more mainstream. Julio Enciso, more of a new up-and-comer Paraguay yeah, player. Yep. Um, what is the record heading into the tournament? Seven out of ten matches in... Uh, their seventh place out of ten in the common World Qualifier. Sorry, I thought it was a score, but it isn't. <laughs> so what, what about the last five matches? Um, they played last year in October against Bolivia. They won. They tied against Chile in November of last year, both of them being FIFA World Cup qualifiers. Their last World Cup qualifier was against Colombia. They lost 1-0 in November of last year. Then on this year, they played on the 7th of June. They draw 0-0 against Peru. They lost 3-0 against Chile last week. And uh, they just played on the 16th and of this Panama year. Panama 1-0. Yep. There we go. They defeated Panama 1-0. Um, I guess not too, not too shabby for Paraguay, um, but kind of a mixed bag of good performances not so good performances um but again 
It's a, I think this is, this is not the Paraguay that we used to see back in 2010, right? That was competing. That had a great defense. Justo Villar on the, on the, on the goalie. Um, and they had, um, was Paulo da Silva from Toluca, I remember. So it was an interesting uh, team back then, but I think they have lost a lot of their luster over the last few years. This isn't, you know, this isn't the Paraguay team that had uh, what, Roque Santa Cruz, uh, exactly. Cardoso, Cardoso, all those guys um, when they were, you know, very successful down there. Um, Lucas but, Barrios. Yeah, Lucas yeah. Barrios. Yeah. Different mm-hmm. Paraguay team who, again, we don't expect <laughs> to uh, really get, get out this group. But but so how, what, what does the matches look like? Uh, first group D matches, uh, see Colombia facing Paraguay and Brazil facing Costa Rica. Match day two, Colombia versus Costa Rica, Brazil versus Paraguay. And match day three, Brazil versus Colombia and Paraguay versus Costa Rica. And uh, this shakes out to be that Group D winner will play the Group C runner-up. And Group C winner will play the Group D runner-up. So we're thinking, you know, Brazil and Colombia from this group, uh, you know, not really sure of the order. You think Colombia might choke. Uh, but, uh, I, I, you know, I, I guess you're, you're saying Colombia might choke in the knockout stages. You, you're yeah, pretty yeah. sure that Colombia will get out of this uh-huh. group. So am I. Yes. Um, but just not sure of the order there. Um, and then, you know, they'll be playing either U- Uruguay or USA, assuming those two are the, you know, they're the favorites to get out of Group C. So um, difficult side of the bracket, but it's going to be gonna Definitely. good to see there. Um, this is a challenge. Yeah, challenge for, for any anybody coming out of Group C. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be uh, not, not the... Uh, it's not like Argentina, right, on that side of the bracket where they really won't face much challenge until they get to the semifinals. That is true. That is true. Well, man, um, as we wrap up this episode, where can our listeners find us, dude? They can always find us on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like button, and turn on the notifications. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast on. Last but not least, you can also find us on Instagram and TikTok. We're posting memes news and short or for videos uh, yeah make sure to follow us on your social media platform of choice and uh, let us know in the comments below how do you see group d shaking out um, do you also think uh, colombia and brazil will advance from this do you think uh, costa rica or paraguay can make an upset and somehow sneak out of the group let us know below uh, and who as a usmt fan are you most uh looking uh, more eager to play in the knockout uh not you know amazing brazil squad or you know a colombia squad who adrian says might choke but uh that just beat usmnt 5-1 who would you oh, rather yeah. play uh let us know in the comments below at the end another good one bro i'll see you in the next one take it easy my friend see ya